Well friends, life got in the way and I did not get the cargo bike done. I did get quite a bit of stuff done to it. In fact, it's almost ready to reassemble. But a couple of things came up that I need to deal with first. If you've been around the channel a while, you know that I built this triplet fat bike where the center rider faces the back. And we had this crisscrossing chain arrangement and stuff like that. The client took it on some shakedown cruises and it came back for frame modifications. There were some tubes that were bent, had to be replaced, and he wanted additional truss rods installed. So that job jumped to the front of the line. And that is going to be next week's video, is the triplet fat bike frame modifications. The cargo bike will be the week after that. What we have today is an emergency situation that I need to deal with. A couple of days ago I woke up to the news that my garage door was open to the outside and the other garage door was unlocked. And that was very puzzling to me. I don't know how that happened. I thought somebody must have broke into my truck and uh, stole the remote to open it up. I went and looked and nothing was missing, so I'm thankful for that. But that's a situation I need to create a safeguard against. And what that safeguard is, is indicator lights. And I'm going to wire in these indicator lights, so if any of the doors is open, it will be a red light and if it's closed it'll be a green light. We'll start by making the light mount. I've got this uh, pre-drilled and formed aluminum bracket. Uh, the holes are too small. I'll just enlarge those with a step drill. We'll just add a second set of holes for the other light because I want I've got three doors. I want red and green for each door. We'll just come in here and mark for a second set of holes. Now that is looking pretty good to me. The next thing we need to do is install one of these limit switches on each of the doors so we'll know when it's closed. Now there are a number of ways I could approach this but I think what I'm going to do is first make limit switch mounts and I'll make those out of this angle aluminum. Now we'll come in here with a transfer punch and pick up these hole locations. Did I mention the transfer punch is just to leave an indicator mark? It is not a center punch. Alright, I've got my indicators and I've got my switch mounts. Now we need to figure out what's going to trip the switch. Now all three of these doors are mounted in the same way. All the rollers but the last one are not very tall. That last one is extra long and because of that when it comes around that curve, it pushes the top up against the door frame. So if I mount this switch right up here, when the door opens, it will miss it. But when it closes, all I need is to put a block of something here and that will actuate the switch. So one thing I need to do is figure out where to mount this. And uh, I will do that by partially opening the door. Okay, that is looking good. Now we need something to push the button. I think what I'm going to use to actuate the switches is these pieces of uh, 1 8 inch by 1 inch steel bar. Plenty stiff enough to actuate that switch. And we'll just bend these in my vice brake. But I'm not sure how much. I better go check. It looks like that's going to be a good shape. On to the next phase, we have this multi-strand wire that should do just fine to carry the signal from the switch to the indicator lights. I've got six lights, I need six conductors, and this has two, four, six, eight. And they're in pairs, blue, brown, orange, and green. So I will just pick out the colorful ones, the blue, orange, and green, and those are going to be my signal wires. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to run the negative voltage directly to the indicator panel. I'll run the positive voltage out through that spare pair of wires out to all the switches. And then the remaining pairs, I will use those to bring the signal back. The normally open contact will drive the green light because that means that it's normally open. If it's closed, the switch is engaged and the, and the door is closed. I'll begin by wiring up the farthest switch and then I will staple the wire along the wall all the way back to the panel.
Okay, so here's what we've got. I've got all the indicator lights and they're wired up with a common negative and that goes out to this wire which will go over to the power supply to drive it all. Then we'll just bring the individual sensor lines to each light and power it up. Okay, now I want to test it. I'm going to go power it up and all three doors are closed so all three green lights should come on. I guess I got that backwards. It's easier to do from here so I'm just going to switch the wires. I love it when a plan comes together. And here's the view from the bedroom window as I cycle each door open and closed a little bit. I'm pretty happy with this. Well, I'm pretty happy about that. You know, once something happens once, it kind of nags at you and you're always wondering, did I do that again? Uh, I don't even know how that got left open because I've never done that ever in six years of living here. I'm really happy with the project. It turned out exactly as planned. Thanks for stopping in. I'm happy to answer any questions in the doobly-doo below, so please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.